So we're talking about Kundalini Kriya Yoga. So the question arises, what is this Kundalini? Well, it is a name we've given to a potential energy all of humanity will have access to in the far off future. It's something that has been given to us as part of our evolution. In the future, maybe in a million years, humanity will have free access to this energy. But right now, at our level of consciousness, at our level of physical, emotional, mental and conscious state of evolution, we cannot access it easily. It's not available. We have available to us what we call the life force energy, prana. Okay? We can consider this to be a first level of Kundalini if you want to. Okay? This is the force, the energy that we have right now. And it can propel us to higher states of consciousness, but it cannot propel us to the super conscious states, okay, to the higher states of consciousness. In order to do that, we need the extra energy, the Kundalini energy. Consider a rocket ship. Okay, it needs fuel okay, to overcome the gravity of the earth in order to go into orbit. Right? When you look at a rocket or even the space shuttle, how much fuel does it burn? A lot. Okay? The higher the orbit it wants to go, the more fuel it needs. Okay? So the same with our levels of consciousness. In order to achieve to the higher states of consciousness, like the state of liberation or called the self-realization, we need a lot of energy. We need to awaken and we need to raise this Kundalini energy. We're trying to do something that will evolve, that will unfold in a million years. We're trying to do it within our own lifetime right now. That is the great work we are embarking on. Okay, in order to be successful in this great work, we have to awaken and we have to raise the Kundalini and we have to stabilize the Kundalini. Okay? Because even though you may have raised the Kundalini, it can fall back down to lower states. You have to continuously keep raising it and stabilizing at the higher levels so that you have continuous access to this Kundalini energy. Also, you must keep in mind that the awakening and raising of Kundalini and even stabilizing of it is a continuous effort. There are different levels of Kundalini awakening. Okay. Even the next level, the first level of Kundalini awakening, which we can call prana, we've already accomplished as human beings. Now we're trying to step into the shoes of superhuman beings, the next level of our evolution. Then we have to awaken, raise and stabilize the second level of Kundalini energy. And we have, when we have achieved that, we are going to awaken, raise and stabilize the third level of Kundalini energy and so on to reach even higher levels, divine realization, cosmic consciousness and beyond, enlightenments of different levels which require different and higher levels of Kundalini energy to get into that kind of orbit. Now, Kundalini, in order for it to be awakened, we have to understand that we have five bodies. I've talked about this previously. And uh, you will remember that the energy body is where the energy channels reside. That's where pran moves around. That's where the energy centers called chakras reside. And that's also where the energy channel called Sushumna Nadi or the central channel. That's where 
that resides also. It is through the central channel, the Sushumna Nadi, that the Kundalini has to rise. In order to awaken this central channel, Susumna Nadi, we have to first awaken and purify. Purify in the sense of getting the energy centers to higher levels, to be able to capacity higher amounts of energy, to increase their capacity. That's what we mean by purify. Okay? Increase the capacity of our energy centers. So we have to increase the capacity of our energy centers. And when we increase the capacity of our energy centers, we also have to increase the capacity of all the energy channels, okay? what we call nadis. These are like the arteries and the veins in our physical body, which carry blood. In the energy body, they carry prana. Okay? So when you increase the capacity of the chakras, you increase the capacity of the energy channels, then you awaken the central channel, the Sushumna Nadi. Now you're ready okay, to uh, awaken the Kundalini. And when you awaken the Kundalini, then you have to raise the Kundalini from one energy center to the next and so on, from the first chakra at the root center up to the seventh chakra at the crown of your head. That is where the thousand petal lotus resides. When the Kundalini rises from the first to the seventh chakra, then you have attained to a super conscious state of self realization. Okay? This is called raising Kundalini. But then you have to keep doing it so that you stabilize the Kundalini at these higher states okay? so that it does not fall back down. Okay, so it's a continuous effort. Problem arises when people who have not purified their nadis, have not purified their chakras, the energy centers, and haven't even awakened the sushumna nadi, try to awaken the kundalini. Okay, that will not happen. And if it should accidentally happen, that could cause a lot of problems. It could cause psychosomatic problems, physical, emotional, mental problems for those who do this accidentally or had it done accidentally or who do it without a proper guidance or supervision. Okay, but you need not worry about it because those who undertake a spiritual practice such as Kriya Yoga, such as the Kundalini Kriya Yoga, okay, it is done very safely with a lot of safeguards. Okay? So you will not accidentally awaken the Kundalini before you are ready. And there will be no such problems as those who have done it without the proper guidance. And so as we start on our practice of the Kriya Yoga, let us keep in mind that although the goal of Kriya Yoga is self-realization. In order to achieve to that self-realization, the techniques of Kriya Yoga purify the nadis, purify the chakras, awaken the sushumna nadi, awaken the kundalini, raise the kundalini, and stabilize the kundalini. That is the process that Kriya Yoga uses to achieve self-realization. Om Shanti Shanti